One of the problems I've been struggling with for almost two years is how can I modify my 8-way joystick to work as a 4-way. Some games such as Pac-Man, Mappy, and many others just aren't playable with an 8-way joystick. So I set out to solve this problem, and so far it's working out great. I used MOI 3D, which is Moments of Inspiration, to design a plate and inserts that allow switching from an 8-way to a 4-way restrictor in a matter of seconds. Taking this design and 3D printing the parts allows a quick swap without the need to open the control panel. We're also going to make it fun by having a subscriber-only giveaway, so be sure to enter if you're interested in winning your own set. Let's get started. Okay, so the design of this started out just like most designs do, sketching it out on paper. I got the measurements and placed them onto the diagrams here. I think out of all of these, probably this one is the most accurate to the final design, or current design, I should say. Basically, what it looks like is there's two notches up here, instead of having four here. And this is opened up, so you can slide the joystick inside of it and it'll restrict the movement here uh, just to up down left and right from there i took the rough design and measured each of the areas like right here i wanted to measure the uh, distance from the top uh, top screw holes and then the side screw holes and this caliper i got on amazon it was like 10 bucks so if you're interested in uh, sending me some measurements for your joystick, I'd appreciate it. That way I can hopefully support more joysticks uh, in the future. So another thing that I did is measure the stick here at the base. And these are what the pieces look like that were designed in MOI 3D. So you start with a base plate like this and the top of it is actually right up here and what you'll want to do is just simply pop it in like that and now you have a four-way restrictor just like that pretty easy right and when you're ready to play a different game say street fighter and you want the eight-way you just simply pop in this top piece here so now it's an eight-way again you can just I've got a little notch here that uh, you can put a coin in to easily pop it out. Or you can just sometimes use your fingernails as well and then pop it back in. And that's it. So what it looks like assembled is you basically put this on like so. Uh, this particular joystick has a little sleeve that goes over it. And of course you just screw the ball in like that and then you have your completed assembly. This, uh, uh, this plate would actually sit on top of your control panel so you can easily swap out these inserts. Uh, some people aren't going to like that, I understand, uh, but I couldn't think of any other way to do it um, that'll fit everybody's holes in the control panel and so forth. So uh, if you have some ideas on some improvements to the design, I'd appreciate seeing those in the comments below but uh, this is where we are currently um, tell you what at this point let's go ahead and take a look at how this was designed in MOI 3D at this point you may be wondering how did I design the components that went into the arcade well, I used a package called MOI 3D, which is Moments of Inspiration 3D. I'll put a link in the description below so you can quickly go there and check it out for yourself. What I did is I downloaded the demo copy and started experimenting with it, and I really liked it. And so I got a licensed copy of it, and now I am thrilled to show you how I created these components for the arcade cabinet. I started with the base plate over here and once I got that figured out then I went through and measured the spacing in the joystick 
uh, in the base of the joystick and created these inserts which pop in nicely into the base plate. So if I zoom in here, you can see the uh, component, the insert that goes into the base plate. While I was at it, I created a couple of washers and a tool for popping out the inserts. And then up here, created another one. This one, notice the nice rounded edge there. I, I really like that you can do that so easily in MOI 3D. Um, but this is for the eight-way control, so you can just pop it out and have a nice insert on top of the uh, plate. And then over here, we have the four-way restrictor. So yeah, it's uh, worked out really well so far. I'm really impressed uh, with both MOI 3D and uh, the way the games play now. Uh, it's pretty cool. So maybe at this point, we should take a quick look at MOI 3D in case you wanted to design something similar, or maybe you want to just play around with it. Okay, so now let's take a quick look at MOI 3D, or Moments of Inspiration 3D. Now, I'm by far not an expert on this software package. I'm still learning. But I've learned enough that I think uh, I can show you a few things right here that uh, you may also find helpful. I'll also put a link in the description below to some re resources that are available on the MOI 3D website that uh, will help you get up to speed on the software package pretty quick. But with that said, let's go ahead and create something real quick. Um, we'll take here a rectangle and we'll take on the top view we will drag out a plate we'll just make it that big and notice you have four different views here you have your top view over here you have your 3d view your right view and your front view basically you're taking a look at the same object from different perspectives and it makes it easier at least for me when designing uh, the object. You can, of course, go in and select just 3D if you want to just view the 3D view, the top view, the front view, or the right view. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it in split view. And now what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into a 3D object. So I'm going to go to extrude, and I'm going to click here on the square that we just created, select the curves, which we've done, and now it's asking how big we want to make it. Now I could just uh, move the mouse up and down if I want, or I can just type in, let's say I want it uh, four millimeters. I type four, press enter, and now we have a four millimeter in height object. I'm going to delete the original rectangle. And you can also do this with other objects. So let's say if I wanted to create a rectangle here, I'll just draw something out real quick and make it look like a little plus sign. So we'll drag another one on here. Look at that. Okay. So now we made a little plus sign and I can also click all three, all these objects. I could also, if I wanted to just select them all just by holding the left mouse button down and selecting them. And then I can go over to Boolean and I can say union, and it turns it into this three-dimensional, well, it's actually not three-dimensional, it's a two-dimensional image right now, but we're gonna fix that by clicking on the object. We'll go to extrude, and we'll make a pretty little plus sign. How about that? Isn't that neat? You could take that, delete the original object, or keep it if you want, and now we have a plus sign. Okay. So that's how you can use the union control um, or union function. I'm going to go ahead and delete that object. And now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to draw a cylinder. I'm going to start out with a circle. And then we will turn it into a cylinder by clicking the extrude. And we select the face. And then how, however big we want to make it. That looks good to me. Now I'm going to click off of there and I'm going to select just the circle and press the delete key because I just want the cylinder in this case. Now what I'm going to do is over here on the bottom left, I'm going to position this and then in the top view, I'll position it 
on the top and notice the object goes all the way through the plate that we're building and the reason for that is we're soon going to uh, basically put holes in this plate and the way we're going to do that is there's a couple of ways you could duplicate this cylinder you can click it press Control c on the keyboard on windows and Control v to paste it and now we have a copy there's another way you can make a copy if you hold down the control key and click on an object you can also do that and make a copy that way so there now we have uh, four cylinders and a rectangular object and now I'm going to subtract out from this base object the cylinders so I click on boolean then I click diff now it says what are the objects that you want to subtract so now I just click here 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 and here say done and now we have a plate with holes in it now what if we wanted to smooth it over a little bit um, there's another tool here you can go to fill it and select the objects to fill it I'm just going to select it's basically a, a double click on the circular area select them all and then say done and now it's asking the radius five looks good you can make it larger if you want to go to one millimeter you could do that uh, if you want to go back to let's say 0.4 that looks pretty good i'll click done and now i'm going to go ahead and put it in full 3d view so you can see that Looks pretty neat, doesn't it? So it only takes a few minutes to design some semi-complicated objects. You could go a lot further with this, but let's say at this point we want to 3D print this object. We can click on it, and then in the lower left, we'll go to File, Export. So now we'll say Test Plate as an STL, save it, and then from there, We'll see this dialog where you can change the number of polygons if you want a whole bunch of them make it really detailed um, we'll just go with that click OK and now the objects exported okay so now once the objects been exported you can load it up in your slicer program for your 3d printer in this case I'm using flash print so if I load the object I can go in here and go to our test plate and load it Click open, there's our plate right there. And if I zoom in a little further, you can see the edges are nice and smooth. The object is on the print bed itself, so it is 100% ready for 3D printing at this point. MOI 3D is a rather inexpensive package compared to many others that cost several thousands of dollars and require subscriptions and constant updates and so forth. So I highly recommend you check it out if you're interested in making 3D models of any kind uh, for use with 3D printers or perhaps animation or other projects that you have in mind. I'll put in the description below some links where you can learn more information about MOI 3D. Okay, so now let's install the adapter. To do so, we're going to go ahead and remove the ball to the joystick and then the screws in this one I have two screws so I'm going to put the face plate back on put the screws back in and to fix the nut and do that to the other side and then once that's done we'll put the ball back on the joystick do a quick check yep feels good now we'll close up the control panel. Got to reach down here and flip the latch so it'll lock it down. Close up the coin door. And now I'll go ahead and position the camera in a way that you can see what it looks like. And that's it. Looks pretty good. Now let's do a functional test. 
I'll position it so you can see the screen here. And yes, we're playing Miss Pac-Man using this four-way restrictor plate. Now to prove that I can actually fully play this game, I'm going to fast forward the video in just a second so you can see the first two levels of Miss Pac-Man being played fully. You're going to hear some strange sounds while the video is being fast forwarded. And then we'll get to the cut screen. And this was not possible prior to using this adapter. One thing we haven't done here at Wagner's Tech Talk is have a drawing, a contest, if you will. And I figured this would be a great time to have a contest. So what we're going to do is, once we reach 700 subscribers, which currently we're around 460 or so, um, once we reach 700 subscribers, then I'm going to give away five of these restrictor kits to five lucky winners. Five individuals who have subscribed to my channel and have sent an email to Wagner's Tech Talk at gmail.com and in the subject heading entered restrictor contest and in the body of the email include your YouTube username and that you want to be entered into the drawing. Once you do that, you will be entered into the drawing and once we reach the 700 threshold, then the contest will be over and I will send out five of these units. I will mail them personally to wherever you are. Um, we'll exchange information and you can tell me where to ship it. This is a prototype at this point, so I would like to ask if you have one of these, which is a caliper. If you have a caliper, if you don't mind taking measurements of the spacing between the screws, you measure from the middle of each screw uh, to, for the top corner, for the length of the side corners, and also the base of the controller, just like I mentioned at the beginning of this video. If you don't mind, include that in the email or in the comments below. And what that'll do is it'll allow me to make sure that I have adapters designed for more controllers than what I can possibly afford on my own. So if you would do that, I would greatly appreciate it. It's not necessary in order to be entered into the contest or anything like that. That's just something to help make sure that what I develop works for you. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like what you see. This is a work in progress. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you soon.